This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. Today I want to talk about Yogi Berra's Bitcoin. This is Yogi Berra. He's widely revered as America's greatest philosopher. He also played some baseball. He won 10 World Series championships, but he's really most famous for his aphorisms like baseball is 90% mental, the other half is physical. You better cut the pizza in four pieces because I'm not hungry enough to eat six. And then probably the most famous one, it's deja vu all over again. But I think his most important one is nobody goes there anymore. It's too crowded, which is what we're going to be talking about today with relation to Bitcoin. I often think of this quote when someone recommends their favorite chip coin over Bitcoin. You should use Litecoin because the fees are lower. You should use Bcash because the fees or lower. This is what super duper chap 6508 said in this comment. It would be great if Bitcoin had fees less than a penny. We already have it. It's called Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin. If this makes you angry, then you are in a cult. We need to admit that Bitcoin is broken and unusable. It feels like Bitcoin is the fax machine and we insist on using it even when email is available. So why are transaction fees often much lower on other blockchains than Bitcoin? I think it's for the same reason that real estate prices are lower in the middle of the Nevada desert than in the Colorado mountains or on the California coast. Very few people want to live in the desert in the middle of nowhere. Nothing against that, but that's something that very few people want. By contrast, lots of people want to live near the mountains or near the ocean. And there's high demand for some real estate, low demand for other real estate. Bitcoin's block space itself is probably the most valuable digital real estate in the world. There's only one block every 10 minutes on average, and that block has limited space. You could speed up block times, but that would only cause chain reorgs, reorganizations, and other node synchronization problems. Here's why your blockchain has low transaction fees, because no one wants to use it, Bcash, Litecoin. If everyone wanted to use it, your blockchain would have high transaction fees as well. If you're enjoying this video so far, I just ask you to help to support the channel. Click the subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video, and share this video with a friend or family member. I want to borrow a metaphor from Bob Burnett, who is on Preston Pish's podcast, which I'll link to in the description notes below. He talks about how the price action around scarcity is nonlinear. So for example, if you have 100 apples for sale and only 99 buyers, those apples will be very cheap. But if you have those same 100 apples for sale and 101 buyers who really, really each want an apple, the price of the marginal apple will skyrocket in price. And so just adding two buyers here, two buyers of apples changes everything. Now in the apple market, you can always plant more trees. You could import apples from abroad. But with Bitcoin, Bitcoin's block space is programmatically limited. So this is a metaphor for full block space. When Bitcoin blocks are close to full, the marginal price of block space is quite high in the same way that the marginal price of apples is quite high when you have 101 buyers and only 100 apples available. Here's the example. This is why block space can get so expensive. Let's say I'm fleeing China with $10 million and I need to get my Bitcoin transaction into the next block before my private jet leaves. How high of a fee is too high to pay for this? $50 for the transaction, $500, $5,000, $50,000, $500,000, even $5 million. Theoretically, fleeing the country with $5 million left over is much better than fleeing with nothing. So Bitcoin, as we all know, the asset, BTC, the asset is scarce, just 21 million coins. This max supply is credibly enforced by the self-interest of all Bitcoin node operators who will never agree to run software that dilutes their holdings. But not only is BTC the asset scarce, Bitcoin's block space is also functionally scarce. It's infinite over a long enough period of time, but in practice and given our three score and 10 year lifespan approximately, Bitcoin's block space is quite scarce coming just every 10 minutes. Now, why not just increase the block space? That's been tried in the past with various Bitcoin forks and with disastrous results. Here's Bcash and here's BSV, both of which have trended basically to zero against BTC. People will ask at this point, why not just store your savings in BTC and then use Litecoin or Monero for spending for payments? Yes, you could do that if you really wanted to, but it's an inconvenient intermediate step that almost no one will take. It's inconvenient. You have to pay an extra conversion fee, commission, or slippage. There's a potential leak of privacy as well. 
people who save in Monero and spend in Bitcoin are part of a very small anonymity set. And so if you're interested in privacy, which is the only reason you'd be into Monero, it's still relatively easy here when people move between Monero and BTC to track those conversions in order to de-anonymize people. Litecoin and Monero, in addition, are what I call hot potato money. No one wants to hodl them because they're such a poor store of value compared to Bitcoin. And the few merchants who accept them usually convert them immediately to Bitcoin for storage. How do I know that this happens on net? This is the chart of Litecoin versus Bitcoin trending to zero. This is a chart of Monero against Bitcoin trending to zero. The real hodlers are in Bitcoin. The hodlers are not in Monero or Litecoin, or you wouldn't see charts like this. I'll link to this video that goes into more depth about why Monero and some of these other coins are what I call hot potato money. And here's the real problem. If people don't want to hodl your coin, then your coin will never develop a strong circular economy where people both want to earn it and spend it as we're seeing happen with Bitcoin around the world. And if no one wants to hodl it, then you're at a distinct disadvantage to Bitcoin which not only has many more merchants and other people who want to accept it as payment, including me, I accepted as payment on my website. So Bitcoin has these very strong buyer and seller network effects as well as other network effects. So Bitcoin not only has many more merchants who want to accept it. So if you're holding Bcash or Litecoin, you have many fewer merchants available, but Bitcoin also has the strongest hodler community in the world. Bitcoiners invented hodling and no one does it like a fanatical committed Bitcoiner. Altcoiners are constantly searching for the next pump. And why do they do this? They do this so that they can dump their current coin and buy ultimately more BTC with the proceeds. And this is why every single altcoin chart will continue to go to zero against Bitcoin forever. No one wants hot potato money. Everyone wants digital gold. So when people say transaction fees are so high that no one wants to use Bitcoin anymore, this really, this common cope has strong Yogi Berra vibes. Nobody goes there anymore because it's too crowded. Obviously, transaction fees would not be high if there weren't demand for Bitcoin block space. The only reason that your blockchain has low fees relative to Bitcoin is because your blockchain is losing against Bitcoin, because your blockchain cannot compete against Bitcoin. Everyone likes to laugh at Bitcoin scaling travails and all the debates around it. But the only reason that your chain hasn't encountered scaling travails is because there's just not that much global demand for your altcoin. But here's the good news for altcoiners. Your blockchain will never need to scale that much because Bitcoin has been winning and will continue to win. Money is a winner take all game. Fortunately, money always scales in layers too, so that if you or I get priced out of the Bitcoin base layer and can no longer afford an on-chain fee at a certain point in time, we can always do transactions on layer twos like Lightning or Liquid instead. And I talk about how money scales using the examples of the gold standard, the fiat standard, and the Bitcoin standard in this video, which I'll link to in the description notes below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.